All right, this is a continuation of 1.3, so hopefully you've done that first portion. And now we're going to look at equations where, if you read the title, they either have no solution or an infinite number of solutions. So let's see what that means um, in terms of what you would see as your answer for x. So the procedure is still the same. The procedure is always the same. You drop a line down the equal sign, and you decide which side your variables are going to go to and which side your numbers are going to go to. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to pick variables on the, I don't know, let's do variables on the left, numbers on the right. Again, it doesn't matter. You just have to make sure that you have it labeled properly so you know where everything goes. So variables here and numbers there. All right, so I have to decide what's not on the correct side. So this 3 needs to move because it's not a variable. So I'll move it by subtracting. Remember, the minus sign relates with the 4. This minus sign right here is connected to the 4. Since the 3 doesn't have a sign in front of it, it is positive, so therefore the inverse is minus. So I'm going to line it up under the 7 because that's what it would combine with, or I guess negative 7. And you bring down what's left. Don't forget that when you bring down the 4x, it's negative. And negative 7 minus 3 is negative 10. And bring down the 4x. All right, now I have to decide again who's on the wrong side. Well, this is where all the variables go, so that's fine. This is where all the numbers go, so that's fine. But this needs to move to the variable side on the left. So the inverse is plus 4x. And then these cross out and negative 4x plus 4x is 0. It's not 1x or x, it's 0. Anything plus itself, I'm sorry, anything with its inverse is 0, right? Like 2 plus negative 2 is 0. So 4x, uh, negative 4x plus 4x is 0. So I get 0 equals negative 10. Now, you, hopefully you're looking at that and saying, that's absolutely ridiculous. That makes no sense. 0 doesn't equal 10. So since this is false, then that means that there's no solution. So the answer that you would write is no solution. So instead of writing x equals 3 or, you know, whatever you would put, the answer that we circle is no solution. And you know that it's no solution because you get this ridiculously false statement. All right, now let's look at example 4. In order to do this, first I have to distribute. So I'll get 6x plus 4 equals, when I distribute, 2 times 3x is 6x plus, and then 2 times 2 is 4. So if you see something weird happening right now, that's okay. You should, um, but let's just go with it. So I'm going to follow my procedure, which is dropping a line, and let's bring variables to the left and numbers to the right. It doesn't matter. So I will subtract 4 from the left because it's on the wrong side. Right, That 4 right here has to go away. So I get 6x equals 6x. Okay, right, because these cancel as well. Um, then I have to bring the numbers, I'm sorry, the variables to the left. So I'm going to subtract 6x to make it go away from the right, and 6x minus 6x is 0. And then when I do it to the other side, I get 0 as well. So I end up with the same thing on both sides, 0 equals 0. Now, you could have said that up here you have the same exact thing on both sides, and when that happens, at any point, you don't have to go all the way down to here. If you ever get to a point where you're like, oh, wait a second, it's the same thing on both sides, the answer is infinite number of solutions. So what that means is that no matter what number you plug in, you're going to get a true statement. So you could plug in 0, it'll work. You could plug in 5, it'll work. x could be 2.5, it'll work. x could be 3.3 .3 repeating, it'll work. Whereas in example 3 up here, 
no matter what you plug in, it's not going to work. You're never going to get a true statement. doesn't matter what you think x is. There's nothing that's going to make this equation true. So these are our two special types of equations where you either have no solution or an infinite number of solutions. Or some people will write infinitely many solutions, and that means the same thing. All right, now our next example actually has a solution. It's a multiple choice, and you can see the choices are not no solution or infinite numbers. So there are, there is an actual solution, so we just have to read the question. The circles are identical. What is the area of each circle? So one thing that you should know about a circle is that this is called a radius, right, halfway from the center to the edge, and this is a diameter. So this whole thing, if I go across the green circle, this whole thing should equal this whole thing because it says the circles are identical. So x plus 2 on one side, so then if the other side is also x plus 2 because the radius is the same no matter where you go, what would this be? What would you get if you combine these? You would get 2x plus 4 as the whole length across. So 2x plus 4 equals 4x. I'll start you off. Drop a line down the equal sign. Let's do numbers on the left, variables on the right. I'd like you to pause the video right now and try and solve this on your own. All right, now here's the trick. If you picked choice A, you fell into a trap answer because the question doesn't say what is x, it says what is the area of the circle. So if you think back to when you first learned how to find the area of a circle, it's pi r squared. So if the area equals pi times the radius squared and the radius right here is x plus 2, so the radius is 4, right? Because this was originally the radius. So when I plug in 4 squared, you get pi times 16, and you don't have to calculate it because it's choice C. All right, last word problem together. A boat travels x miles per hour upstream on the Mississippi River. On the return trip, the boat travels two miles per hour faster. How far does the boat travel upstream? And they've given us this formula, distance equals rate times time. You might have heard that maybe in science class, um, but if you haven't, that's the formula, distance equals rate times time. So we have to figure out the distance upstream using rate and time. Well, I'm going to doodle on this picture over here. They tell me that going up it was three hours, going down it was two hours, two and a half hours. But they also tell me a piece of information in the story that's not in the picture. So part of this going upstream three hours was that it traveled X miles per hour. So X MPH. And going downstream... They tell me that it was 2 miles per hour faster. So that's x plus 2 miles per hour. So the miles per hour is the rate, and the time they give us in the arrows. So let's set up the equation. So the distance going up was, all right, distance up is 3. Oh, whoops, so the rate is x times 3. The distance down is x plus 2 times 2.5, right, because the speed was different. So let's solve these a little more. Uh, this would be 3x if I just write it a little friendlier. And this would be, oh, we got to distribute, 2.5x plus 5. So the last thing that we have to realize is that the distance from Chester to whatever this dot is, is the same distance as the dot down to Chester. So the distances are actually the same. So I can write the equation 3x equals 2.5x plus 5.
the distance one way is the same as the distance the other. The only reason that it took less time is because the boat went faster. So let's drop a line down the equal sign and let's do variables on the left and numbers on the right. So I have to move the 2.5x So I get 0.5x equals 5, divide by 0.5, and that's 10. So let's see the question, right? Because I, I, we don't want to get tricked like you might have in the previous question about the circles. How far does the boat travel upstream? So now I know this x, which is the miles per hour upstream, right, because it was x miles per hour. So the distance up is 3 times 10, so it's 30 miles. All right, if you have any questions, highlight, annotate them, or ask them when you come to class.